Hey guitar enthusiasts, Nick here from the channel. Welcome back. We're, today we are going to be discussing something that can often be frustrating and can turn some people out of guitar maintenance. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean the proper setup and float of a Floyd Rose bridge. We have on our table here our modified LPK1 Junior kit that we have put a Floyd Rose special on and a Wilkinson humbucker bridge. As you can see, it's sitting a little bit flush back towards the back end of the body where we should have that sitting a little bit higher. That's going to allow you to have the proper action and set up properly. So let's get right into it. When it comes to this, this is a matter of balancing act. You're going to be balancing the springs in the back cavity with the spring cloth, as well as the string tension on the front. The two of these set just right is going to allow that bridge to sit as it's supposed to. Let's go through it together. Today we have a, one of the tools to make it easier is the trem block shred net. Now this tool is excellent. We also have another option for you with the solo Camella blocks that will stuff into the back side of the guitar. But for me, I've been using this for a while. I've gotten quite comfortable with it. It is a tool that is gonna make your life easier. And what do I mean by that? Well, check it out. This guy has a couple of grooves on the edges there that allow that to sit right underneath those set screws in a way that doesn't put too much pressure, doesn't damage anything, and will make your life easier for the setup. So speaking of setup, we're gonna start by tuning our strings. Now that you got that somewhat close, we're gonna be pulling the block out. Now the one thing you can notice right off the start, now that you've added that extra tension to get your tuning prop proper, it has actually pulled the bridge up from the backside. So when we discussed earlier about proper balancing act, this is where your springs in the back are gonna come in handy. Considering this is already lifted off, our trem block technically has done its job at this point. We're set somewhat in tune, but this is gonna change drastically as you balance one to the other. So, as we've discussed before in the terms of intonation, the more you're going to tune up here, the more this is going to pull your bridge up the way, which is going to cause your strings to go flat. So, to counteract that, we are going to take the strings in the back, and we are going to tighten them up towards the front of the neck, which is going to bring that bridge back down slightly towards it, which is going to change your tuning. So, you'll have to go back in and fine tuning as it goes. But, in this case, I would recommend using a screwdriver, but we have this... The Walt impact gun here, we're gonna just go very carefully. Now you don't wanna do too much at a time, you wanna do this gradually, otherwise it will pull too much tension and you'll have more problems later. So, we're about halfway there, and we are still sitting a little bit high. So let's check our tuning, see how much that changed things. Now you'll notice as I detune this, it's going to slowly drop this bridge while we're at it. Okay. Seeing at that there, you can still see that we have a noticeable amount that we have to drop that down. So we'll flip this back over and just periodically, just going to tighten up a little bit here and there, not too much at a time. Now, another thing you're going to notice while well, we have this flipped over, everybody has their own preference to this. It also depends on the gauge of your strings. In this case, we have a 10 to 46 gauge string set on this guitar. So we have three springs to accommodate that extra tension in the back. We have these tension springs in a regular tension and a heavy tension as well if you are the down tuning type guys that go up to the 12 to 60s or the really, really heavy duty strings where you need that extra bit that just simply having the regular still doesn't do enough. As we can see, just from dropping that down, we have brought the bridge down to a sizable difference. Let's double check with our tuning. Okay. <laughs> now, outside of the fact it's a little bit untuned, we are getting closer. Now this is the part where some people start to give up. Like, man, every time I tension this and I touch that, it one throws one out of the whack. And indeed it does. So because you've already done the tensioning in the back of that spring, this is where our trem block is gonna come in handy again. So we're gonna slide this back underneath those screws there, and we're gonna get it as close as possible tuning-wise so that when we pop that back out, it is very subtle tuning to get it to where it should be. Okay, now it's tuned, and we have the right height. 
So by the time I pop this trim block out, you're gonna see it drop just ever so slightly because we want it to be floating. Now, from here, you're gonna make your final adjustments, just a little bit of tuning here, a little bit of tuning there. You get the general perspective at this point. Your floating bridge essentially relies on your tension up on the top of the strings, as well as the tension in the backside of those springs. Now, as it stands now, we're quite close. Close enough that it might not need much. Now, judging by this, I can see that it has to come down just a hair, but because we have the trem block in there, putting it up a little bit of the weight, it's sitting slightly sharp. So we're gonna drop it down just a little bit, and I imagine that that extra little bit of that tuning will drop it right into place. Now we're really close. So you can use this as a relative guide as well. If you notice that it's a little bit too sharp, the more you take out of this, it might pull it right to where you need to be. Which in this case, I can see that we just need a tiniest little bit more. More so on the base side. I think that's gonna be sitting pretty. There we are. We're ease in, B is in. Our G is close. Now we're right in the home stretch. All right, now we have a floating bridge. The beauty thing about this kit in particular is that this is actually set flush with the top of the body. If in this case, it makes your life easier, so it does give you an actual eye level, something to really gauge it on to make it official. You can see here, that it is sitting nice and flush with the top side of that body, which in turn means that you have a free floating bridge and set up the way that we want it to be. Now, this should play excellent now with that being said. And now if you get the general idea of it, that's really the fear behind Floyd Rose. Floating means exactly that, it's just the balance. Having the proper balance means a proper playing instrument. By the time you have a little bit of practice on this and you get it under your belt, this is going to become second nature to you and you're going to have more fun playing your Floyd Rose guitars. It is generally something that we see here quite often people asking for a Floyd Rose setup because of just general fear or lack of knowledge. So that's what we're here to help you with and hopefully this gave you some tips to help you set up your Floyd Rose better. Thanks for spending some time with us today in the back shop at Solo Guitars to hang tight as we go through more videos down the road.